On this week's MetPy Monday, we'll start learning more about X-Ray because it's a very important tool for working with the highly dimensional data that we do in meteorology, and it is fundamentally part of MetPy 1.0. Welcome to another MetPy Monday. Hello, I'm John Lehman, a software engineer for Unidata. This week we're going to continue looking at MetPy 1.0, but we're really just going to start looking at X-Array and getting a little bit familiar with it and how we can pull data that's not example data. Because then we'll be able to actually query the GFS, for example, for whatever fields we want and use things like the declarative plotting interface to make plots of those with very, very few lines of code. But for this week, what we're going to do is get some GFS data. So that's going to involve using Siphon and the Threads data server. Since we're getting live data, we're going to open that with X-Array. And there are different ways you could do that, but I'm going to show you probably the simplest. And then we'll make a quick, dirty plot of the data that we get. So first things first, we need to go to the Threads data server, threads.ucar.edu and navigate to, in this case, I'm going to use the quarter degree best GFS. Now we've got lots of past MetPy Mondays talking about how to navigate threads and how to use Siphon, so we're not going to go too in depth there. I'm going to copy the URL here. And remember that we've got all of these different accessors that we can use, OpenDAP, NetCDF subset service, which lets us do the subsetting on the server and return, say, a NetCDF or CSV file and then CDM Remote. We're going to be using OpenDAP today, though. Let's get a fresh notebook up. And the first thing that we always do in Python, of course, are imports. So from siphon.catalog, we're going to import the Threads Data Server catalog object. We're going to import X-Ray, since we're going to be using it directly as XR. And finally, I'm just going to import MetPy. Now, any MetPy import will trigger the things that we call accessors to be brought into your namespace and used. Uh, we're just going to import MetPy since I'm not going to do any calculations yet. In a future MetPy Monday, I'll show you how powerful X-Ray is in that it removes a lot of the steps that you used to have to do pre-MetPy 1.0 in calculations. Okay, so we need to get a catalog object. I'm going to call it best GFS. And I'm going to use my tab completion there. And here we're going to paste in that URL. That's a little bit long and obnoxious. So I'm going to put a line break in. There, that looks better. And then we're going to get the data set for that. And we've talked about how to see the different data sets. For now, we're just going to get the best data set, knowing that it is the first and only data set in this best GFS catalog. OK, so we get a warning. What does this warning mean? It reminds me that I have used an HTML extension right here instead of an XML. It's changed it for me, but if I want to be a good programmer, I'll go back and change that to XML. It's always nice to not have any warnings in your code or as few as possible so that you don't have so many things to go track down if something's not working quite right. The warnings are there for a reason. All right, so now we're ready to open up this data set. You might be familiar with using things like the NetCDF subset service, where you create a query and you tell it all the things you want. I want these variables at these levels at these times and so on. And then you say something like get data or get data raw, and that returns a big data stream to you. What we're going to do here is actually get a data set from X-Array. And then we can do our slicing and dicing, and only when we need the data is it actually brought down. All right, so my data set is going to be X-Ray Open Data Set. 
Now I could pass a netcdf file in here for the whole GFS, but if you go look at that, that's about 31 gigs. And that's not something that I want to download and store on my hard drive because 99% of that data I don't want or need. In fact, in this case, I only want one very specific variable. So we're going to pass it our best data set. And then from the access URLs, which would be all of those things like OpenDAP, CDM Remote, NetCDF Subset Service, and so on, I'm going to select the OpenDAP URL. That'll run, that takes just a second, and as you can imagine, that did not pull the whole 31 gig file. It pulled all of the metadata for that file. I'm gonna be interested in the ice cover surface variable. So I'm gonna call it ice for the data array. I'm going to use MetPy's parse CF, since this is a CF compliant file for the ice cover surface variable. Now let's look at ice and see what we have. This is a data array, and we get this very nice representation here in the notebook. We've got coordinates, latitude, longitude, time, a ref time, and the MetPy coordinate reference system. There are some attributes in here, things mostly from the grib file. And so this is ice cover at ground or water surface. It's more of an oceanographic thing. Now, as we see, there are multiple time steps in here. I only want one time step. We could do this several ways. I'm just going to go ahead and make that into another data array called first ice. Ice.icell. This is much like iloc or iloc in pandas. It's an index selection. I'm going to say I want the time one in this case at zero. Now, depending on when you get this, that variable might be called time one or just time because of some funny things in the way the data are distributed and the threads data server handles them. Now let's look at first ice and see what we have. Ice cover surface, 721 lats, 1440 lawns. We just have the one time and now we're ready to do some plotting. So we're going to make a quick dirty plot using Cartopy and Matplotlib. We will talk in a future MetPy Monday about using the declarative plotting interface and we'll pull in some more interesting data. But I just wanted to pick a variable that is not in any of our examples online. So you can see that you can do this. You can explore the variables and actually work with real data, not just example files. So I'm going to import Cartopy dot crs at ccrs import cartopy dot feature as c feature import matplotlib dot pyplot as plt and of course use our inline magic so the first thing we need to do is create a figure plot dot figure I'm going to specify a figure size in this case of 15 by 12. We're going to create an axis. And for the projection, uh, so we don't spend a lot of time reprojecting data right now, I'm just going to stick with plot curry or lat lawns. I'm going to add a feature. states with a scale of, let's go 1 to 50 million, and a line width of 0 0.5. Finally, we're ready to put our data on. I'm going to go ahead and save a handle to it just so we have it in case we want to do any future modifications. I'm going to use a filled contour. First ice longitude, the x coordinate. First ice latitude, the y coordinate. The first ice variable itself. The transform is pretty straightforward. It's just the plot curry transfer again. 
z order equal to zero just to make sure that we're plotting on the correct layer. And for CMAP, I'll use cool warm since we're plotting ice after all. Now this will take just a little bit to plot because it's a pretty large data set. And though this is really not that complex of code, we're going to show you how we can make it even better using things like the declarative plotting interface. All right, there we go. So now we have areas of ice cover plotted in red. But as you can tell, this projection is not that great. It is just after all latitude and longitude. Some of these distortions are pretty extreme. But I hope that you found this useful and I encourage you to start exploring X-Ray. It's very, very powerful. Think of it like pandas, but for highly dimensional data. We'll continue to look at X-Ray and working with real data, making more complex plots using some of the great features of MetPy 1.0. I hope that you found this useful and until next week, have a great new year, and we'll see you on the next MetPy Monday.